Dan Crowley, I know Dan Crowley from a long time ago. Uh, he actually won my Catch the Flag, uh, what, 18 years ago or something? Actually, no, eight years ago. <laughs> we're not that old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're talking about Hacking Hot 2010. Hacking Hot 2010. 2010. And this guy was already like hacking stuff. And I remember I had a challenge, there was a blog server. It was a blog server. He, he was the only one who popped it. So um, he's amazing, and now he's working at a very big company. So I'm sure that what he's going to say today is very interesting and uh, technical. So please uh, join me welcoming uh, Dan Carl. It's a switch. Tricky. Hello, everybody. Uh, so if you're unable to read, the name of this talk is Extending Archive-Based Path Traversal Attacks. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I got a fantastic introduction from Rod, but I want to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, I am the research baron at X-Force Red, um, and I've been doing pen testing professionally since 2004. Uh, I've been a hobbyist for a few years before that. Um, I was Times 2006 Person of the Year. It's true. You can look it up. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very funny when you look it up. I, I highly recommend you uh, do so to get the joke there. Um, I'm also a home brewer. Um, I, um, I accidentally double booked between this conference and a homebrew competition. So my wife is, uh, is slinging beer at this homebrew competition that we brewed together. Um, I'm very excited about it. It's made with sweet potatoes. It, you should ask me about it later, maybe. Um, also, I hold the noble title of Baron in the Micronation of Sealand, um, which, if you're not familiar with it, you should also look up because it's also a very funny story. Um, but I'd like to get into the background of this research um, by talking first about uh, what archive file formats are. Um, now, there's some confusion between archiving and compression, um, but they're two different things, and there are archive formats such as TAR, which do not have any compression, but are archives. So it's basically just taking several files and stuffing them into one file, or actually that's a bit of a misnomer because there's multi-volume uh, uh, archives where you take a number of files and then put them into separate volumes. Um, but Potentially, you have other features like compression or encryption that come along with it. And some of the most common examples are zip and tar and rar and 7-zip and all that sort of thing. And then you have compression formats, which are sometimes mistaken for archive formats, but are distinct. So we're going to be talking about archive formats specifically. Now, the whole point of this thing is path traversal. Now, uh, some of you might be familiar with path traversal. Uh, if you have an application security background or a development background and you've uh, studied a little bit of, uh, 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 of application security. But basically, path traversal is when you're, uh, you're causing something to be uh, referenced outside of a working directory um, through a number of different tricks. The, the most simple is using parent directory markers. This uh, dot dot slash sequence, which if you're unfamiliar with it means the next directory up. So if you have this relative file path and you say, I'm going to write a file to whatever path you give me, but only in this, you know, temp directory, and I say, okay, I want you to write it to dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash whatever, that goes up the, the chain of directories uh, until the point where it reaches the root. And then you can specify additional directories from there to uh, get that file written wherever you want. And that is the essence of path traversal, is that you traverse up and out of a working directory and into some other directory. Now, there are other ways to achieve this. Uh, for instance, you can use absolute paths where something is expecting a relative path. Um, or you can uh, you can use special markers like uh, the it's not tilde it's is that tilde the squiggly the squiggly um, it, that is the tilde okay the tilde um, which in Unix based operating systems has the special meaning of home directory um, and uh, in um, 
in certain contexts, you might also have um, you might also have uh, like environment variables that can be replaced within the path. So you might have something like um, a system drive, which is a Windows-based thing that just says, you know, whatever drive Windows is installed on, that's the one that I want, right? And now I'd like to, without naming the research specifically uh, and calling it out, I would like to talk about uh, a recent research effort which was effective but incomplete. Uh, woefully incomplete, in fact, and the incompleteness was the reason that I did this research in the first place. So it talks about path traversal as applied to archive formats. So let's say that you have a zip file and you extract it in a working directory. Um, let's use the example of a web application that has a file upload utility uh, built into it. Uh, let's say it's a, a photo storage application. So they allow you to upload multiple images uh, at, at the same time using uh, a zip file. You upload a zip file with images and it it's extracts it into a working directory somewhere in the file system outside the web root and, and then copies the uh, any files that end with something like .jpg, for instance, um, into your particular user directory. Now, if everything is working as it should, none of the files that are extracted from this zip should land outside the working directory. Um, but if you have one of these path traversal sequences as an entry in this archive, it can place these things outside that working directory. So um, it might be the case that, um, let's say that you're on a Windows-based system and you have a, an entry in your zip file that you upload that is dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash windows slash startup slash evil dot exe. So the, the web application takes this zip file and extracts all the files into a working directory. But this one that has this path traversal sequence in it traverses all the way up to the root and then into Windows Startup, which uh, on, any, on any startup of a Windows system, all executables in the startup folder are executed. So the next time that web server reboots, uh, that executable will be executed. Um, and so that's pretty interesting. Um, and so uh, what that means is code execution, right? So just because uh, you've placed a file, you know, you've done this path traversal, you now have code execution in this particular circumstance. And this is not a super contrived circumstance. All you really have to do is get somebody to uh, unarchive all of the files in a zip file uh, or other archive format into a working directory and not deal with path traversal sequences. Now, you would think that this is something that was uh, well dealt with, or maybe not. Um, as it turns out, this, this recent research, um, it broke a lot of things. But it only used the, um, the, most, um, the most basic case. So um, the idea was basically, you know, you, you use this one sort of path traversal sequence to drop files and in certain places like in Windows startup or replace Etsy password if you have that like high privileges or more likely uh, drop an authorized keys file into you know some SSH directory and then have SSH access. So this was the idea but these were the only cases that this research effort um, tested uh, was just this dot dot slash uh, test case, and this is uh, a, a this is one test case. This is not the only one. There are others. So things that this research did not cover. Um, you, there was there was no usage of absolute paths. Um, there was no absolute paths with extraneous slashes at the beginning, or um, there was no use uh, um, of what I've heard called uh, filter autoimmune attacks. So this is kind of cool. Take a look at this uh, third one down. Um, let's say that you are the creator of a, a zip extraction library and you want to prevent these path traversal attacks. So you say, 
I'm going to look for any instance of dot dot slash and before processing that entry, I'm going to remove all instances of dot dot slash. Now if you look at this, this dot 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 slash slash, take, take that and remove dot dot slash from it and what do you get? You get dot dot slash. This also works for dot 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 slash dot slash. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for this particular trick too, uh, you, can, you can also uh, get around that. But um, it's a really cool little trick um, that works on path traversal in general um, in all its forms, but in, in, in it, it also works in particular cases here, right? Um, they also didn't use uh, UNC paths. Um, so UNC paths are um, like Windows specific, like SMB share stuff. So the the way that the UNC share, uh, the UNC paths, like net Windows network file sharing shares are specified are double backslash uh, IP address or host name backslash the share name backslash path, right? Now on Windows systems, there are default shares that are built into Windows. Um, one of them being C uh, dollar sign. Now the C dollar sign share is just the C drive on a Windows system. So this uh, double backslash 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, right? This machine slash C share. Um, well, this is just equivalent to the C drive. It's just you're going this sort of roundabout way. And also there's this additional um, uh, long UNC form that you can use. So if you have, uh, for instance, some UNC share, uh, if it's trying to prevent, you know, UNC shares from being used, uh, if it says like, I don't want anything like, you know, double backslash, you know, some IP address, like, I don't want that. Okay, double backslash, question mark, backslash, that I don't know what the functional difference is other than like certain character restrictions aren't in place with the question mark. Um, but this is just another way of expressing the exact same thing. Now interestingly, <laughs> you can also with the UNC uh, paths write to uh, available shares on other machines. <laughs> so if you had a Windows system unarchiving a zip with one of these UNC paths, uh, you could, in theory, get it to write to a network share when you extract into some working directory, which is really fucking cool. Um, but, you know, uh, that's just yet another case. And then you have uh, this temp, you have the, you know, uh, tilde symbolic links. Uh, by show of hands, uh, did you... Did you, uh, who already knew that symbolic links were supported in zips and tars? Hey, we got one. Very nice. Surprised me. Um, so this was actually, um, this is supported in a number of different archive formats, uh, including tar and pkzip uh, and CPIO archives. So there's a couple different ways that you can exploit this for path traversal. Um, so for instance, you can have a, um, a, a, a symlink to a directory as one entry and then a another archive entry that points to a path like below that directory where the symlink is. So as it the operating system is trying to resolve this path, it reaches the symlink that it's just written and points to a totally different directory. So now if you're looking for uh, just anything that has any path traversal sequences whatsoever. If you're looking purely at the names of the zip entries, you're going to miss the attack. You're not going to detect the attack. Um, so for instance, we could have foo, which points to Etsy and then have foo password, which ultimately would end up pointing to Etsy password. And uh, none of these things would um, have um, None of these things would um, none of these things would have path reversal sequences. None of these things would be absolute paths. They would be relative, but you still get to write whatever file you want with whatever contents in whatever place you want. Now you can also do a symlink to a file, right? So you can have um, depending on the the way that the zip file is the the way that the archive is handled, you can have two different entries 
with the same exact name. Now, this is difficult to do with any uh, normal library, but you can do a little bit of clever hex editing to get a file to contain two zip entries with the same name. And uh, one should come first in canonical order just to make sure that that one gets extracted first because that's the symlink. So you symlink to some particular file and then you have another entry that overwrites that file uh, immediately afterwards. Um, and if, you, if it was originally written as a symlink, it might resolve it before writing. So this is sort of a different, uh, a different a abuse case where the, the entries are handled slightly differently, where the symlinks are handled slightly differently. Um, but the path traversal variations apply here too. Um, if you uh, have a thing where uh, you know, it doesn't like that you're symlinking to an absolute path, uh, maybe you can, at, you can symlink to a relative path. You can symlink to dot dot slash dot dot slash whatever, right? Or you can symlink to UNC share, or you can symlink to, I guess that doesn't really work on Windows because Windows doesn't support symlinks, so never mind. Um, <laughs> but you can, you know, you can imagine how all the path traversal variations that we just discussed fit into this symlink style archive attack. Now, Facebook actually had a problem with symlinks and zips, and somebody cashed out on a, a nice bug bounty as a result. It was possible to upload multiple pictures by a zip file, and then the files were automatically extracted and made available to the user. So somebody figured out you could upload a zip file with a symlink to Etsy password in it, and Facebook would then give you access to Etsy password. Um, <laughs> by virtue of extracting the zip and then giving you access to the symlink, although it really gave you access to what it pointed to. So that was cool. Now, you might think, well, this guy's pretty ninja. Thank you. Um, but most of these techniques are fairly well known. Um, to give you an idea, um, Here's a, uh, a, a little bit of uh, a, a snippet of uh, the security section of a man page uh, for a, the, a, a default tar extraction utility, for the tar utility. And it says, hey, you know, no absolute path names will remove the leading slash. Uh, no path names that include dot dot components um, will just refuse to re extract those. Uh, and symlinks. To other directories you know so it's like somebody's ahead of the game how far ahead of the game well this is from the BSD tar man page uh, which was last updated uh, circa October 2009 so about nine years ago the uh, BSD tar maintainers uh, knew more about attacking through these archive based path traversal attacks than the people who did this research effort which will remain unnamed. Um, what kills me about it is that this, this, uh, this research really did poke holes in a lot of things. A lot of things were found vulnerable, um, which is why I decided I wanted to do this. Um, one thing that they, they missed as well is that there are a lot of for file formats that are just simply, uh, they're derived from zip. They extend the zip file format and add additional things. They use it as a container right? Pardon me. So, uh, for instance, a uh, jar is just a bunch of class files and metadata inside a zip archive. And APK uh, is just sort of a, a, speciali uh, a specialization in the same way um, where it contains, you know, a metadata file, uh, 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 like a manifest and uh, various uh, code files and resources and all that sort of thing. Um, the Microsoft Office formats, the, the modern DOCX, XLSX, PPTX, etc. cetera, um, in fact, the file that I'm showing you right now uh, through PowerPoint is based on zip. Yet you can actually rename like DOCX files or PPTX files or whatever to uh, .zip files and then extract their contents and look through them. It's uh, really kind of interesting. Um, you should try it sometime because there's it's it's it, well 
I'm a nerd about file formats, so maybe you won't find it as interesting as I do, but it's, I think it's really cool, right? But the point being that in order to process a docx file and render it, what do you have to do first? Unarchive. You have to extract all the entries from the archive and then read, uh, read out all the things that are referenced in there to pull out all the entries, right? So, uh, in order to process a docx file, you first have to extract all the files, which means game on. Um, I've already checked Microsoft Office, and I haven't found any way to exploit it, but there are so many third-party Microsoft Office format parsers that I would be surprised if none of them were vulnerable. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things to check here, but... Um, I I haven't gotten to it all yet. I don't think I will. It's a Herculean and possibly a Sisyphean effort. So there's also um, uh, the open document format. Um, there's the Mozilla Fire can figure out what works. I'm sure we'll come up with some more abuse cases. Um, but uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up to any questions that you might have. If anybody's raising their hand, I can't. Ugh. Okay, so it doesn't look. Oh, question. So, my particular role is not one of threat intelligence, so I'm not studying actual attacks in the wild or threat actors, but I do see the relevance of this uh, attack to both uh, phishing style attacks and to attacks on things like web applications, right? Because let's say that I send you a zip file and say, hey, can you read this document that I have? and you open this up and like there's some document there that says haha ha, made you look right and you just hit it's extract all and there's a document there and it's, okay well what is this crap never mind I'll blow this away delete this go back to whatever I was doing and meanwhile it's dropped a trojan in some auto execute directory right it's applicable there um, and then we gave the example of the web application attack earlier where you have a file upload utility that extracts to a working directory and does not nullify these path traversal sequences. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I think that's it. Um, if you think of any questions later, I will be around the conference both uh, for the rest of the day and tomorrow. So I'd love to field any questions you have or if you just want to uh, chat about something completely unrelated. You want to ask me who does my hair. Uh, you know, uh, I'm very friendly. Feel free to talk to me. Thank you. <laughs>